Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rebecca Hersman. I am the director of the Project on Nuclear Issues here at CSIS, and we are pleased to welcome you to this afternoon's event. Um, so thank you very much for taking the time. I know it'll be well worth it. Um, we are very pleased to host this discussion on challenges in nuclear verification and uh, to welcome our honored guest, um, Yukia Amano, the Director General of the IAEA, who will speak in just a minute. Uh, let me take a, a little bit of housekeeping right off the bat. As uh, anyone who's been here before knows, uh, my job is in my very first job here is to be your official safety officer. And uh, I want to make sure you understand some of our safety protocols. We feel very confident and safe in our building. We have very well established protocols, but nonetheless, um, we at every event want to make sure you understand. If for any reason we um, were uh, told to exit the building, um, myself and my staff would help lead the way. Um, the staff is at the back of the room. If you just raise your hands, you will see them. Um, and everyone's available to assist. Uh, we would go out through the front doors around to the left to the National Geographic building, which was our muster point. If for any reason the front entrance was not available to us, we have alternatives out the other side. Um, so just take a minute to be familiar and rest assured that you are in good hands. Um, also want to mention that today's meeting is on the record. Uh, the video will be available on the CSIS website. We are live tweeting the event from our CSIS Project on Nuclear Issues account. That is at CSIS Pony, and we use the hashtag, uh, hashtag CSIS Live. Um, the issues before us today in terms of challenges in nuclear verification are uh, really all in the news. Uh, so the event is indeed well-timed. Uh, the issues and the work of the IAEA has come up in the context of North Korea, Iran, perhaps even Saudi Arabia, um, not to mention the day-to-day -day work across uh, the vast majority of countries and international partners um, and uh, countless uh, nuclear reactors uh, around the globe that are subject to IAEA safeguards um, and as part of the whole non-proliferation regime. So I think we really are in for a treat to be able to have a good conversation about how that is working for us today and the challenges um, we face in nuclear verification going forward. So it's my pleasure to introduce Director General Yukio Amano, our featured speaker for today's event. He'll provide some remarks, and then I will join him back on stage for a moderated discussion, and then we'll open uh, the floor to questions from all of you. You probably don't need me to say this, but I, I want to you know, explain um, that uh, Yuki Amano is the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency. He assumed those duties as the IAEA Director General on the 1st of December in 2009. He has extensive experience in disarmament and nonproliferation diplomacy, as well as nuclear energy issues, both serving the international community, the UN system, and a long career of service uh, in the Japanese uh, foreign government, foreign service ministry. Um, he has served uh, in the Japanese foreign ministry as director general for disarmament, nonproliferation. Uh, he served on the US panel for missiles and the UN expert group on disarmament and nonproliferation education. He's contributed to multiple NPT conferences and will do, I'm sure, in the one to come in 2020. So with that, let me step out of the way and invite uh, Secretary Director General Amano to the uh, podium to give his remarks. So thank you very much for being with us. Please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, very nice uh, to recognize uh, familiar faces among uh, the audience. I am very much impressed uh, by uh, the excellent works of uh, this institute, and I'm very honored uh, to be given uh, the chance today. What I'm going to, uh, to say today is based um, on my experience as a Japanese diplomat and the Director General, and in, in that sense, it is my observation um, uh, through some 30 years. And um, um, the text uh, I'm not reading uh, the text. Uh, the text is um, uh, 
are being circulated now or, or uploaded uh, to our website and I think on the um, yeah, website on, uh, in this area of nuclear or verification. Sometimes precise language is needed or precise number is needed. Uh, so uh, for these uh, details, please refer uh, to uh, the written document uh, that is um, uh, being uh, circulated. Um, I um, uh, touch upon uh, the main theme uh, of that paper, and um, uh, uh, I'm very uh, willing uh, to discuss uh, the matters with you. Um, the, um, uh, first, I would like to um, uh, share m uh, my views about um, uh, the environment in which we are working, uh, the um, uh, recent um, uh, history and background. Uh, there have been um, uh, positive developments um, I mean, uh, the IAEA is enjoying confidence uh, as a uh, verification organization, the only multilateral uh, verification organizations. And um, uh, I have been uh, doing my best uh, to uh, make our activities um, uh, uh, impartial, uh, independent, and uh, objective. And credibility is uh, the biggest asset of all uh, our organization. IAEA is a small organization. We are not wealthy, uh, but uh, we have uh, the credibility. That is uh, the biggest asset. And um, um, uh, in, the, in the past decades, um, uh, there, was, um, there has been a very important development, which was um, uh, the agreement on uh, the additional protocol. Uh, the additional protocol uh, is, um, uh, is a very, very important, uh, powerful uh, verification uh, tool. And um, uh, um, uh, for example, in case of Iran, uh, uh, JCPOA, uh, Iran Nuclear uh, Agreement, made it possible uh, to implement uh, the uh, additional protocol. Uh, it means uh, lots of gain uh, for, from uh, the verification um, point. Um, uh, However, uh, we are facing challenges. Um, uh, if um, uh, our fundamental mission is to prevent uh, the spread of uh, nuclear weapons, um, from that angle, uh, the, there has been a lot of uh, progress uh, since um, the first um, uh, nuclear weapon was uh, developed. Uh, technology, uh, which was not available for many countries some 70 years ago, are now available. Uh, the knowledge is uh, circulating. You can have easy access uh, to knowledge. Uh, you can have access uh, to education. And uh, because of the globalization, uh, equipment, or uh, even very sophisticated one, sophisticated one um, uh, are available um, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by people. So all of these um, uh, make the proliferation easier um, um, uh, than uh, before. And we are working uh, uh, against uh, that, uh, that background. The amount of um, uh, nuclear material uh, that um, need to be placed under IEA safeguard uh, has been kept on uh, increasing. Uh, the, um, um, uh, the countries, both developed and developing countries, are using nuclear material. And uh, some countries uh, shut down uh, nuclear power plants, uh, but uh, when uh, the, uh, the uh, power plants are shut down, we need to continue uh, to um, uh, monitor and verify uh, these um, materials and facilities. And um, uh, um, uh, this, um, uh, this um, uh, um, uh, simply increases uh, the burden uh, to our inspectors and our safeguard department. We are operating under a very modest increase uh, of budget. And um, uh, this year, uh, we are experiencing uh, the minus budget, real minus budget, uh, in reality for the first time in, in the past decades. Uh, if this uh, trend of, um, of minus budget continues, uh, we'll have difficulties uh, that will impact uh, the, uh, the um, uh, inspectors. Um, uh, I stress at this point because uh, the IAEA has a particular character. Uh, the inspectors must be financed by regular budget. On, in other organizations, if uh, the fund is uh, lacking, they can raise fund. Uh, they can uh, um, um, uh, go to the funding organizations and collect money. But in our case, 
Uh, of course, we can do that for other purposes, uh, but in order to strengthen uh, the, uh, or in order to uh, finance uh, the inspectors, we cannot use that money because we have to ensure uh, the impartiality uh, and objectiveness and independence of inspectors. This is a very particular character, and uh, this is not well understood. Um, uh, so uh, we, I have um, a concern uh, that um, uh, if this uh, trend um, or this reduction of budget becomes a trend, it will give negative impact uh, to our activities. Safeguard system uh, is, um, uh, the, uh, is um, uh, establishing the safeguard system is uh, the responsibility of uh, member states. Quite often people confuse uh, the role of member states and IAEA secretariat. Uh, it is not a role uh, to uh, decide whether or not to do the uh, um, uh, verification in case of um, um, comprehensive safeguard agreement, in case of Iran, in case of DPLK, uh, that is uh, the same. But once, uh, the, uh, once uh, the, our member states decide um, uh, to, uh, to, to undertake uh, the verification activities, implementation uh, is our task. Uh, we are asked and authorized by uh, the Board of Governors, our policy-making organ, uh, to monitor and verify uh, the activities. Uh, I, um, uh, from time to time, uh, remind member states uh, of this uh, demarcation of work. We do not intervene in, uh, the, uh, into the political uh, uh, issues um, that should be treated, uh, addressed by member states. And uh, we are in charge of the, in the, uh, in charge of the implementation. Uh, we should be independent. Um, uh, for the time being, uh, there is um, uh, no attempt or uh, appetite uh, to strengthen uh, the safeguard uh, system. Uh, in fact, uh, these attempts were made uh, from time to time in the past. Uh, for example, in 2005-2006, um, a committee was established uh, to look into this issue. But after um, many meetings and reports, uh, they concluded without delivering um, a concrete agreement. Uh, and um, I do not um, see any move into that direction, I mean strengthen uh, the safeguard system. So we have challenges. Uh, we don't have um, uh, the, um, uh, the um, uh, prospect of um, uh, safeguard um, uh, framework being strengthened. What can we do? The best thing that we can do is uh, to use some of the uh, existing system uh, to respond to uh, the challenges. One of um, uh, the most important things uh, is the same. Universalize uh, the additional protocol. It is already existing. And um, uh, we cannot call it a um, legal obligation. Uh, but I uh, strongly recommend all the countries to conclude and implement the additional protocol. When I became uh, the Director General in 2009, uh, 94 countries uh, were implementing uh, the additional protocol. Now, um, uh, the number is uh, 134. And um, uh, I very much expect uh, that more countries uh, will implement comprehensive safeguard and additional uh, protocol, both. Uh, this will be very, very helpful. Another uh, thing that we are doing is uh, to use um, uh, the advanced technology. Um, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, uh, modernized uh, the Cybersoft laboratory uh, for safeguard. Uh, I started to do it just after I became the director general, and um, uh, it was uh, completed on time uh, and uh, within, uh, the, uh, within the budget. Uh, we can now analyze uh, the particles, samples, coming uh, from uh, the uh, nuclear uh, site, nuclear facilities, uh, much more precisely and um, uh, much more quickly than before. Uh, without this modernization, it was not possible uh, to analyze uh, the samples uh, coming from Iran uh, on a timely uh, manner. 
Uh, this is um, a very important asset uh, for us uh, to have this uh, very sophisticated um, uh, laboratory. We have um, 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 modernized our IT system uh, for uh, safeguard. Uh, we were dependent on the old system, but now uh, 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 the replacing it by the new system uh, is uh, completed. And with that, uh, we can uh, store uh, the information, all type of information, and uh, we can um, uh, uh, retrieve from, uh, the information and we can analyze it much more uh, quickly and much more systematically. Uh, 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 this is um, uh, the basis uh, for the use of IT now for the agency. Uh, we have um, uh, also using, uh, based on this system, a uh, collaborative um, analytical uh, platform which enables us to collect um, our open source information and um, uh, the, the number of pieces of information uh, that we collect is uh, incredible. Millions of pieces of, of information and um, uh, we can uh, analyze it very, very uh, quickly. Uh, uh, what we are doing now uh, is different to what we, uh, we were doing 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, we also uh, use some um, satellite imagery and um, um, uh, they are very, very helpful, especially when our experts are familiar with uh, the, the facility and uh, ground. Uh, the, uh, the satellite imagery is important, um, but um, uh, human knowledge is uh, also very important. Uh, we are using uh, these uh, advanced technologies, uh, but human eyes are indispensable. Human uh, the, the eyes cannot be replaced by, uh, by uh, technology. That is why I, I'm saying uh, that losing uh, the experienced uh, inspectors because of the lack of fund uh, will give negative, very serious impact to the IAEA's uh, activities. Um, setting aside uh, the, uh, the use of advanced technology, uh, we have introduced um, um, a new approach called state level approach. In the past, we focused on facilities, but now uh, we are focusing on uh, the country as a whole. And um, uh, uh, that um, uh, makes um, uh, our approach more standardized and more effective. Uh, we also established a highly specialized expert group to focus on some issues exclusively. Uh, those inspectors um, uh, um, uh, in the specialist team deal with specific issue like Iran or DPLK. Um, uh, given the fact that our um, um, budget does not increase uh, or even decrease, and um, um, uh, the increase of our staff, including uh, inspectors, are very limited, then uh, the option that we can take is to select uh, the, uh, the important topic and concentrate. Uh, uh, this is uh, how uh, we can uh, undertake activities related to Iran and uh, DPLK without increasing a um, um, uh, large number of staff. Um, uh, these are uh, the, uh, the uh, approaches uh, that um, we are taking and we are going to take in the future uh, to respond uh, to the challenges. Changing um, 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 subject a bit, uh, I would like to say a few words about uh, the familiar topics like Iran, uh, DPLK, and um, briefly Syria. Iran, um, uh, the IAEA started to focus on this issue since 2002-2003, and there's a long history. Uh, uh, but um, 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 uh, with the support from, uh, from uh, the member states, uh, we intensified our work and um, uh, looked into uh, the Iranian nuclear activity issues. Uh, in 2011, um, uh, I became the director general in 2009 and um, uh, provided my first report. And um, uh, it was uh, qualified or characterized as uh, blunt, uh, but it was straightforward. And um, uh, um, uh, I um, uh, took uh, the position uh, to state the facts uh, in light of uh, the existing rules uh, and um, 
on, on the, in light of the safeguard practice. Um, in 2011, uh, I shared uh, the information uh, related to the weaponization, uh, which was called issues with a possible military dimension in, in the IAEA, but it means uh, weaponization activities. And in 2015, uh, we um, sh uh, uh, shared our assessment that Iran uh, engaged in activities relevant to the development of nuclear weapons. Uh, but um, um, uh, they uh, did not develop uh, nuclear weapons yet. And um, after 2009, we do not have uh, the credible indication uh, that they are continuing. What I said is that we do not have the credible uh, indication. I did not say uh, that uh, everything is in peaceful purpose. And uh, we are continuing to um, undertake activities uh, to verify that everything is in a peaceful purpose. Um, uh, the, um, starting from <clears throat> the beginning of 2016, uh, we have been given on the task of monitoring and verifying uh, the Iran nuclear agreement, JCPOA. Um, uh, it should be noted that we are not a party uh, to this agreement. Uh, it is um, um, uh, the agreement among P5 uh, plus um, uh, uh, one, uh, and now uh, P4 plus one uh, are parties uh, to, the, uh, to this agreement. Uh, our task is to monitor and verify and report it uh, to the Board of Governors. Um, uh, there have been, it is not uh, that easy, uh, but uh, for now, as of today, I can say that Iran is implementing the agreement. Um, for the future, it is very difficult uh, to speculate. Um, um, uh, we are working with Iranians, and uh, when uh, there are uh, some problem, I talk to them, and uh, um, um, we, we are implementing. That includes uh, the access uh, to locations uh, that we need. Um, uh, 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 for the future, I do not speculate and let's see uh, the, the development. On DPLK, it's a bit different. Um, uh, on the, um, uh, for now, uh, we, uh, uh, we follow uh, the, uh, the um, uh, political development and we welcome it. Uh, we hope uh, that this will come uh, 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 to uh, produce uh, concrete results. Uh, we do not intervene uh, in our political uh, process. Uh, the objective uh, is set uh, by uh, the uh, United Nations Security Council resolution, denuclearization, what's um, CBID. But uh, how to uh, come to that um, objective, or uh, when to do it, uh, what will be the procedure, depends on the polit political uh, negotiations. We are not a party uh, to the uh, negotiation, uh, but um, uh, we have a very strong feeling, a uh, sense uh, that um, any nuclear-related um, uh, agreement, commitments, uh, must be uh, accompanied by, uh, by uh, verification. Uh, the commitment without uh, uh, verification uh, loses uh, value. Uh, if requested, uh, the IEA is, um, uh, is ready uh, to uh, uh, be in charge of the monitoring and uh, verification of um, on the uh, agreement that uh, 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 can be reached among other negotiators. Uh, we are, for the time being, uh, we are strengthening our two functions. In 2017, uh, I have established a small uh, team, and uh, the function is to strengthen our capacity uh, to monitor. We don't have the inspector since uh, 2009, but we are observing uh, through satellite imagery and um, uh, uh, we detect a, num a number of things. On our, we are increasing our capacity uh, to monitor uh, the uh, North Korean activities uh, through satellite imagery and uh, from open source, and um, uh, share it with uh, the international community. Second function is to uh, get prepared um, um, to send back our inspectors uh, to uh, North Korea if requested. And um, uh, preparation is ongoing, and uh, um, uh, we can do that in weeks' time uh, once uh, we uh, 
uh, agreement is reached and our policy making organ, Board of Governors, authorized us uh, to do that job. Um, uh, 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 as for the activities of DPRK in the nuclear uh, area, we are, we are monitoring mainly uh, Yonbyon site. And um, uh, in the past 10 years, uh, they have been uh, expanding uh, their activities. And um, uh, that includes last year. Uh, last year, uh, we have uh, observed uh, um, mixed signals. I mean, they, um, uh, the five megawatt uh, reactor uh, was not operating uh, for some time. Uh, they were very active in uh, constructing uh, the small light water reactor. And um, um, uh, they are working on uh, the, um, uh, the infrastructure. Uh, we do not see uh, that reprocessing facility um, uh, was functioning. It was not function. Uh, it was not operating. Um, uh, so uh, these are some of um, uh, the, um, uh, the activities uh, or uh, absence of activities uh, that we have observed uh, last year. But uh, if we look back the past uh, ten years, uh, they kept on expanding. They uh, uh, continued uh, the nuclear-related activities. Syria, um, uh, uh, for now, uh, we don't have um, uh, the change. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, they have constructed um, uh, the facility, uh, and um, it was uh, destroyed in 2007. Our inspectors visited, um, uh, 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 but more activities were needed. Verification activities were needed, uh, but um, uh, uh, it was not done. And, um, uh, in 2011, our Board of Governors decided that this reactor, this building, is a research reactor that should have been reported to the IAEA and decided it was a violation of the safeguard agreement. Situation doesn't change since that time. Um, um, next um, is um, uh, not a specific case, uh, but um, uh, I would like to touch upon briefly uh, the issues that are frequently raised uh, by, uh, by people. One is some um, uh, third-party information. Um, we do not discuss um, uh, the uh, intelligence information uh, publicly, uh, but um, uh, let me explain how we deal with uh, the information. Information comes uh, from my inspectors, uh, from open source, uh, from third party, uh, or um, uh, from any source. Uh, but uh, the basic uh, principle is that um, uh, we analyze uh, the information. We do not take any piece of information at its face value. Uh, we need to analyze, uh, we need to evaluate, uh, and um, uh, uh, once the information uh, is assessed to be uh, broadly credible, um, uh, we uh, take action. Uh, take action means uh, seek clarification or request access. Um, the third party information uh, through experience is sometimes correct. On other occasions, it is not correct. So um, uh, the, uh, the best way is to analyze, evaluate, and when needed, take action. When uh, uh, there's no need, just uh, not to take action. The, um, uh, the problem is that uh, we are bound by uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, safeguard agreement, and we cannot disclose uh, the uh, confidential safeguard information. Uh, once, when uh, we have we find problems or possible violations, then uh, we can share it. Uh, with uh, we can bring it to the board of governors. Uh, but as long as um, uh, member states are uh, implementing their obligation, uh, I cannot uh, share it. But the fact that I do not share the information does not mean that we are not working. Or we take actions, or we analyze, and when we need, we take actions. But simply, when everything is fine, we keep quiet. That is our legal obligation. Um, uh, it is um, um, also quite often discussed, I mean, the weaponization issue. Um, on uh, this issue, uh, we are confident and because, uh, that uh, we have uh, the, uh, the mandate 
because um, a basic function is to prevent uh, the spread of nuclear weapons. So if um, uh, there are uh, activities related to weaponization, it is natural uh, uh, that um, we uh, look into that. But uh, this, uh, this issue is more complicated because um, uh, it has some um, uh, uh, political aspect and security implication. Uh, just having a mandate uh, is not enough, at least uh, in the past experience. And, and there has been, uh, um, been uh, the involvement by member states. Sometimes uh, a member state requested us to, uh, to look into that. On other occasions, our board of governors asked us to look into that. Or Security Council um, uh, made a, uh, a decision. Um, so uh, this is the case. On, in the future, um, uh, I, I, I do not speculate. Uh, it should be uh, on case by cases. On, but uh, one thing is very clear. Uh, the IAEA acts uh, based on, on the existing uh, safeguard framework. And uh, we continue uh, to be uh, impartial, independent, and objective uh, all the time. Uh, this is the source of uh, credibility and confidence. And I, as I said at the outset, this is a very important asset uh, for us. This is um, uh, the outline of, um, of uh, what um, uh, um, um, I put in, in my right, uh, written um, text. But um, uh, when you write something or when you, uh, when you uh, uh, want to know more, more exactly, please refer to uh, the, the paper. Uh, they contain figures uh, or more exact language. Um, uh, but um, uh, if I read it um, uh, through, it takes too much time and uh, take up uh, your time for questions. So I stop here, and I'm very happy to take your questions. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and you've definitely laid out a lot of the, the key issues in your remarks. Thank you for that. Um, I have the opportunity to have a little bit of a discussion with you, and then we'll invite the rest of the audience in. Um, and of course, I, I just feel you know we have to talk about some of the issues in the news, um, because uh, nuclear weapons and various issues associated with nonproliferation seem to be um, pretty salient uh, nowadays in terms of our national discussion. Um, you know, one of the first, uh, including in the news just this very week, is the issue of Saudi Arabia. So, you know, we have a, a state that has um, made some interesting comments about possible nuclear intentions, depending on how situations evolve in the region, um, expressed intention to develop uh, a nuclear energy program, uh, is not an adherent to the additional protocol, and of course, there have been some recent disclosures about uh, technical uh, nuclear cooperation that might be uh, getting ready to unfold between the United States and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. How do you see the role of the IAEA in this, in sort of the, 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 the nascent edge, um, advocating for the additional protocol, but helping the international community make sure that we manage the transition into nuclear power in a country like Saudi Arabia in a way that we can all feel confident will not be a transition in any way to nuclear weapons. Thank you very much um, uh, for reminding me of this issue. Uh, Saudi Arabia um, um, uh, has an agreement uh, between the IAEA and Saudi Arabia uh, of, on the uh, safeguard agreement. It is a comprehensive safeguard agreement, um, and it was some. Um, uh, it was some uh, um, concluded. Um, uh, it was uh, it was um, approved by the board of governors in two thousand five, and entered into force in uh, January two thousand nine. So they have the comprehensive safeguard agreement, but uh, so far they do not have um, uh, a significant amount of, um, of um, um, nuclear material. Very small amount, uh, and for these countries, uh, it is some, uh, uh, say they are not requ required 
to implement all the elements of the safeguard agreement on the, uh, uh, the part of safeguard agreement is applied. And this is called small quantity uh, protocol. Uh, the countries uh, that do not have or have very small amount of material um, uh, 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 can, can apply certain part of the safeguard agreement and which is a small quantity uh, protocol. Um, uh, we had uh, the, a small quantity um, uh, uh, protocol, then it was um, uh, renewed by a modern uh, contemporary one as a whole, not only for other countries. And it is not an obligation to move on to the new one. Uh, they can stick to the old one, uh, but uh, there was uh, this change. And, uh, once uh, they have um, uh, more than uh, the, uh, the smallest amount of, um, of uh, uh, specific amount of, um, of uh, nuclear material, uh, they need to move uh, to uh, the full-fledged safeguard agreement. Uh, uh, this is uh, the arrangement. Um, the, uh, now, uh, the Saudi Arabia is um, constructing a research reactor uh, using uh, the technology uh, from uh, uh, Argentina. And we know that because uh, they informed us uh, in 2014 that uh, they, are, uh, they have the intention of constructing and uh, they shared uh, the information related to this research reactor. I saw in the newspaper of, um, of uh, satellite imagery and uh, uh, give the allusion that it was a secret uh, uh, construction uh, that was detected by satellite imagery. That is not true. Um, this is known by us. This was uh, informed to us and we know the details. Uh, and they do not have uh, the nuclear material yet. And, um, uh, but now um, uh, they informed us um, uh, they are close uh, to the completion and before uh, uh, they bring in um, uh, the uh, nuclear fuel uh, into, onto their territory, they need to uh, move on to uh, the full-fledged uh, comprehensive safeguard agreement. Additional protocol uh, is um, uh, a different thing. Um, uh, they don't need uh, to uh, implement, uh, conclude and implement the additional protocol uh, to uh, construct and operate the research reactor. This issue of additional protocol, as I understand it, is discussed in the context of transfer of certain technologies, namely the mining and milling of uranium. This is a different, completely different story. Under the um, uh, comprehensive uh, safeguard agreement, uh, there's no requirement uh, to report or to declare uh, the mining and milling of uranium. Um, under the additional protocol, um, uh, they need uh, to uh, declare the mining and the milling of uranium, uh, but it doesn't mean uh, they have to place uh, these um, uh, activities and facilities under safeguard. They need to uh, uh, declare, they need to inform us. Whether uh, uh, the um, uh, implementation of, um, uh, of additional protocol is a, uh, make, uh, to make it a condition for the transfer of technology is, depends totally on each state. Some countries uh, do not make it a condition, other countries uh, may make it a condition, in, and it is up to uh, the, the country uh, to, uh, to, to decide. Um, uh, the bottom line is that um, um, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, is um, um, uh, under the safeguard, has a safeguard with us. Uh, it is a um, small quantity protocol. Uh, it should move, uh, Saudi Arabia should move uh, on to the full-fledged safeguard agreement um, uh, before uh, they uh, import uh, the nuclear material uh, in, on their uh, territory. Additional protocol has nothing to do with uh, this research reactor um, uh, and it is not um, um, the condition for the transfer of technology as far as uh, the IAEA is concerned, but uh, each country uh, can uh, put it a condition or not to put it a condition. And so uh, this is where we stand. Thank you. That's, uh, that's very informative, very helpful. Um, perhaps, you know, uh, kind of switching to a, a slightly more challenging topic, because uh, it is challenging in all aspects, that of Ir Iran and uh, Iranian implementation of the JCPOA. Um, of course, there, I think the biggest item in the news 
of late and of which there's been great controversy inside the U.S. nonproliferation community has to do with the quote-unquote atomic archive, um, the trove of information that was disclosed by the Israelis. And, and the, the debate and concern has been about whether or not the response to information was sufficiently timely, timely uh, sufficiently in-depth, or whether there was a situation created in which critical information had the, the chance to quote unquote walk away. Um, can you help us feel better about the situation? Okay. Um, first, um, uh, I have to uh, make it clear uh, that in 2015, uh, we um, provided the assessment that Iran involved in uh, the activities relevant uh, the development of nuclear explosive devices. We said they did it. It is our assessment. Uh, and if uh, we said that uh, Iran uh, did not do anything uh, related to nuclear weapons, uh, this uh, could be a breaking news. Uh, but we said so, and um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, I see in media uh, that uh, there, uh, 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 there is uh, additional information. Um, my, um, uh, my limit is that I cannot discuss um, uh, the third party information or intelligence information publicly. Uh, but um, uh, let me put it this way. Whether uh, the information uh, comes uh, from, a third, from third party, or uh, from my inspectors, or uh, from open source, first, we do not take uh, that information at its face value. Um, sometimes information is correct. On other cases, information uh, is not correct and um, uh, uh, indifferent to the source of information. So we inde independently analyze uh, the information. That is very important. And um, uh, uh, when we come to the assessment uh, that uh, the information is broadly credible, then uh, we uh, take action. Uh, we ask clarification or uh, we request access uh, to the location. And this is some uh, um, uh, routine work under the safeguard agreement and uh, comprehensive safeguard agreement and uh, additional protocol. And uh, there's no reason uh, not to do it. Uh, but simply, if we don't have um, problems, we don't um, uh, share the information. Or uh, if we have the problems, then we bring it uh, to the Board of Governors. Um, um, uh, I also uh, heard from, uh, from time, to time to time, um, uh, why don't we uh, move uh, quickly? Uh, or, uh, if um, you are too slow, you may lose some of the opportunity. For this, I would say, uh, not uh, publicly speaking does not mean that we don't do anything. Even though we take actions, we don't uh, discuss it when we don't have a problem. So uh, please don't confuse. Our silence does not mean no action. Our um, uh, silence means, so far, we don't detect um, uh, problems that we need to share with um, uh, the international community or with member states, one. Second, um, too late or slow delayed. But from when? Um, uh, uh, when we receive uh, the information, the uh, clock doesn't start to tick. Or if we get um, uh, the, um, uh, the false information, should I act immediately? I said, no. Uh, we have to, uh, to evaluate, and uh, we need to assess uh, that uh, the information is uh, broadly correct. And uh, we decide this is worthwhile taking action. That is when and, um, and, uh, uh, the clock starts uh, to, to tick. Um, or it is like uh, something. That house is suspicious. Um, uh, you have to go there. No one can now uh, get into the house. Uh, without uh, process, without uh, being sure that this is uh, uh, the, the correct information. And uh, uh, as I said, IAEA uh, should be impartial, independent, and objective. Uh, we work uh, under uh, the existing uh, safeguard framework. We are asking others uh, to respect the rule. So do we. Thank you. Um, OK going around the globe to various problems, I would like to talk a minute about North Korea. 
Uh, you did state recently, and I think reiterated again just now in, in your comments, the, the sense that uh, the IAEA could be on site in, if called um, in the DPRK to assist with verification activities. Um, you know, within even a week, I, I believe was, was the comment. Weeks. Weeks. Got it. Um, so the question is, does it matter? You know, the big debate here uh, from a, in terms of dealing with North Korea and what denuclearization might look like is between step-by-step -step approaches um, that might allow a certain amount of transparency and progress but leave somewhat open-ended longer-term resolutions versus comprehensive agreements um, that would lead to a broader kind of full scope uh, set of disclosures and verifications. And obviously the latter is preferred. That would clearly be ideal. Uh, the question is whether the former has value and how it could be implemented without foreclosing um, a more comprehensive arrangement in the future, and to do so in a way that doesn't, uh, in the American phrase, sort of buy the same horse again. I guess, you know, if you would be there on the ground, do you have some suggestions of, of areas where you think um, we might be more successful quickly in achieving elements of transparency? And related to that, how comfortable are you um, with the agency interacting and being on the ground in this kind of step-by-step -step kind of formulation where perhaps there aren't as many agreements and details worked out and the situation is a bit more fluid. Um, is there still a valuable role for the IAEA in that type of situation? We are flexible. Um, we have been adapting to the situation. and um, We clearly distinguish uh, the political role and a technical role. Um, uh, objective is uh, the denuclearization. De uh, but uh, how, to, uh, how to come to that uh, objective is um, a matter uh, that um, uh, need to be uh, decided by uh, political negotiations. Um, uh, to do everything at one shot or is an option. Very difficult. Um, um, step by step uh, is a method uh, that have been tried, but it accompanies um, um, uh, uh, difficulties uh, too in uh, other sense. On what could be uh, the compromise point? Uh, what type of agreement um, um, they can uh, they can reach? This is uh, totally depend on on the uh, on the negotiators. On the, uh, once uh, we are tasked uh, to uh, to uh, do the monitoring and the verification, uh, we adapt ourselves uh, to the task that we are given, and um, um, we are very confident to do that. Uh, but um, uh, uh, I would say uh, that um, uh, involving uh, the international organization uh, in uh, the verification and monitoring uh, is a benefit to everyone. Because um, the IAEA is the only um, a multilateral international organization in charge of uh, verification. And um, uh, once we are involved, um, now that can provide the most credible assurance uh, that agreement is uh, implemented. And this uh, must be the benefit of North Korea too. Or if they reach agreement, they like the agreement. If they like the agreement, they want uh, that um, uh, the agreement will continue uh, to stay alive. That is the same uh, for the United States, for the international community. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, um, our involvement uh, is uh, the benefit uh, to all, and I hope uh, that um, uh, member states, and, uh, and uh, including North Korea, understands uh, this uh, advantage. You asked me uh, what is, um, uh, what is um, uh, the most important area. I would say uh, that um, our inspectors um, put their uh, feet on the ground. This is a very important step to show uh, that North Korea is uh, working with the international community, whether uh, we start from small or big. Thank you. Well, staying on that subject a little bit, um, you know, often we uh, don't talk about this, but for those of us that have worked in kind of the weapons of mass destruction area, we think of North Korea as a kind of a triple threat, right? There's the nuclear challenge. There's also chemical and biological challenges. And depending on how um, a disarmament or denuclearization process unfolds, we could be looking at combinations of, uh, of challenges. 
the international community hasn't really dealt with something like that in that kind of way. Um, I think probably till going back to UNSCOM and IAEA in Iraq um, following the Gulf War, that had some, some you know, good lessons, but also some others that weren't that good about how to make these international entities work together on the ground in <coughs> such a complicated situation. Do you have any thoughts? Have you all thought about that, about working across international institutions and organizations in an area like North Korea? Uh, we uh, always welcome um, uh, the partnership with some other international organizations. Uh, but um, um, I'm very clear uh, to concentrate our efforts or limit our efforts in nuclear field. Uh, if we um, uh, try to uh, stretch uh, our activities in other fields, uh, we just confuse other people um, and we cannot make a meaningful contribution. What can we do about chemical? What can we do about biological? Um, uh, uh, we cannot. But we have the expertise uh, in uh, nuclear-related issues and um, uh, concentrating in the nuclear field. And uh, that is the uh, best way of contributing uh, to the safety, peace of the world. Um, I said uh, that I'm happy uh, with working with other international organizations with one condition. We should be independent. And we should stay in the driver's seat uh, as far as nuclear issues is related. We do not welcome uh, that uh, somebody tells us what we should do, what we shouldn't do. Uh, agreement must be established, and we abide by uh, the agreement, and we do our job. This is our, our view. OK, thank you very much. Um, I, I'm going to open to all of you in just a minute. I just have one final set of give One second, now I'm going to ask one more question. But be ready, and uh, we'll come in, <laughs> coming out to the audience. But um, I, I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about uh, the NPT. We are looking ahead to the 50th anniversary of the treaty. Um, and while that should be a celebratory time, um, it in fact, it, it may not be quite uh, smooth sailing getting through the review process over the next uh, 12 and 18 months. Um, the IAEA has a very important role to play here. There's a number of different challenges uh, going forward. And I would really welcome both your thoughts on some areas where we could be strengthening inside the, the NPT and the nonproliferation uh, regime, and how you see the IAEA helping us to navigate sort of the shoals ahead uh, as we go through the review conference process. Um, uh, we have been contributing uh, for uh, the good term operation of the NPT. Uh, in various areas. Uh, and uh, the nuance or our level of contribution is different uh, depending on the area. Uh, for disarmament, uh, we are um, um, prepared to share our experience of implementing the safeguards and verification. Uh, and if requested, uh, we are happy to do so. Uh, in the past, uh, for example, uh, we have provided uh, the background document uh, in relation to uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, weapons of mass re destruction uh, free zones in Middle East uh, to the facilitator. Uh, uh, we shared uh, this information. But this is some, uh, what we can do and uh, we have done in the past. Um, for non-proliferation, it is different. Uh, the non-nuclear weapon states uh, 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 under the MPT have the obligation uh, to conclude comprehensive safeguard uh, with us, and um, uh, uh, our board authorizes uh, me to conclude and also implement uh, the agreement. And um, uh, uh, we uh, keep on doing that. Um, for the peaceful um, uh, application uh, of nuclear technology, uh, I am very much interested. This is a very important subject, uh, which is not very familiar with many people. Uh, for the cancer control, uh, for uh, the food safety, protection of environment, uh, uh, food production. In all of these areas, nuclear technology is used, and uh, that is uh, contributing uh, uh, to attain uh, the objective of sustainable development goals. Uh, we are doing that, and uh, we have modernized um, our laboratories, thanks uh, to the generous contribution uh, from the United States and others. 
uh, uh, but uh, one small footnote. These are, I mean, uh, the uh, uh, transfer of technology for peaceful uh, use uh, is the IAEA activities based on our statute and upon request from member states. Um, we are not doing that uh, upon request from NPT or NPT um, uh, uh, member states. Uh, we do that uh, for the benefit of our member states and um, uh, consequence, most of them are the members of the NPT too, so they benefit. Uh, we continue to stay uh, in the driving seat uh, in this field. We, are, we have been providing the secret service, secretariat service for non-proliferation and um, uh, since um, uh, this cycle um, uh, we have um, uh, strengthened our involvement uh, to support uh, the UN secretariat uh, in relation to uh, the peaceful activities. Uh, I have been working uh, on uh, NPT uh, before I joined uh, the, uh, the IAEA and um, um, quite often uh, people ask me what is most important for now. Um, uh, uh, appoint uh, the president. Um, uh, without president, preparation cannot take place. This may, uh, this, um, um, uh, may look like a small thing uh, for uh, many people, but procedure is substance and substance is procedure. Uh, in, uh, in uh, this field. Um, if uh, the president is, uh, uh, is appointed one month before, he cannot do the job. Uh, long preparation, uh, intensive consultation, extensive consultation is needed to prepare, prepare for the coming 2020 um, uh, uh, conference. This is not exactly my, my mandate as the director general, uh, but uh, NPT is very important for us, and I really wish a success uh, for um, uh, the coming NPT process. Thank you. All right, it is definitely your turn. I know there are many questions. Um, uh, my colleagues will be coming around with the microphones. I'm gonna ask you to come up to the, the top, uh, Annalise, we'll take uh, these two here, um, and then I'll, I'll kind of work my way around the room. Please uh, tell us your name, your affiliation, Keep your question succinct uh, so we can bring as many people into the conversation as possible. All right. Go ahead. Thank, you. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Mitsuo Nakai, a Japan native US citizen, uh, Reagan Foundation. Uh, my question regarding North Korea, uh, if they decided to go for denuclearization, my question is, how many years does it take for them to denuclearize? It's a hypothetical question, but that's the question I have. Thank you. I, I'll take two or three questions. Can we yeah, take a couple? Yeah, exactly. Yes, it is here for me. Thank you, Director General Mano. It was always nice to see you, and thank you for your very important remarks today. I'd like to ask you about a question that's actually outside of my area of expertise, but is definitely within the agencies and one that I should say, I'm Richard Johnson from the Nuclear Threat Initiative, and we care very much about the issue of nuclear security. And uh, while the nuclear security summit process ended in 2016 under President Obama, the issue of nuclear security and that of uh, weapons usable material is still very, very relevant to the world. So I'd be interested to hear a bit more about how the agency is continuing to work on that mandate. Thank you. Uh, we can grab Jennifer, and then we'll stop with that, take some of them, and we'll keep going. Thank you very much, and it's so good to see you again, uh, Director General. I'm Jennifer McBee from PSA, Partnership for Secure America and Federation of American Scientists. And following on the last question, a lot of people here see the CPPNM and Amendment Conference, Review Conference coming up in 2021 as kind of a continuation of the Nuclear Security Summits. So I'm wondering what IAEA is doing to prepare for that. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I start from uh, the first question, how long does it take uh, to denuclearize? And um, uh, um, it will take a long time. Um, uh, how, uh, how do we understand the denuclearization? Um, uh, it's um, uh, uh, complicated, but first uh, they need to dismantle or remove uh, the nuclear weapons. And um, uh, nuclear weapon states are interested in, uh, in uh, doing that job. 
uh, we have expertise um, in um, monitoring, verifying uh, the um, uh, enrichment activities uh, or uh, um, plutonium or uh, related facilities. And um, 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 once um, um, suppose um, they are shut down, we need to continue uh, to verify. And if um, uh, the material stays, we need to continue uh, to verify that they stay um, uh, in, in peaceful purpose or uh, suspending the operation. So uh, um, uh, the safeguard agreement does not have um, uh, the, uh, the term. It, it is um, forever. And uh, we need to keep on uh, monitoring. And if we relax our efforts, then uh, the danger resurfaces. That is why I say uh, the amount of uh, nuclear material that we need uh, to safeguard increases increasing, and um, uh, inspectors are needed, and um, um, uh, we need uh, to stay vigilant. Not only uh, in this case, uh, but in uh, on, on all the cases. As long as nuclear material, as long as some uh, uh, equipment stay, we need to. And even though uh, uh, there aren't equipment, we need to continue to, to, uh, to monitor and verify it doesn't come back again. Uh, um, so uh, uh, this is a continuous effort. Um, uh, at the outset, a, a lot of works will be needed, but we need to follow up. That is very important. Nuclear security. Um, um, uh, nuclear security um, is some, uh, clearly uh, uh, the mandate of the, the IAEA from uh, the beginning. Um, uh, but um, uh, um, uh, to be uh, honest, uh, the nuclear uh, security related activities um, uh, increased after 9-11. Uh, so um, uh, this is rather new. Uh, we did it. We did the activities before. Uh, but um, our activities um, uh, were strengthened, enhanced after 9-11. So in that sense, it is relatively new. And um, uh, um, uh, our staff, our budget uh, is, uh, uh, is less uh, compared uh, to other uh, programs. How uh, uh, do we address uh, this issue? We like to do concrete things. Um, uh, just for example, uh, we provide uh, uh, equipment. Um, uh, nuclear detectors uh, to, uh, to the, uh, the country and to the people. People, I mean, border guards, uh, customs officers, and there are a number of choke points, uh, and we focus uh, uh, on, on these, uh, these points. We need to train people uh, how to use uh, these equ equipment, uh, how to look at um, uh, the, the trafficking. So uh, train people is very, very important. Maintaining the database is uh, very useful uh, to analyze uh, the trend and anticipate what would happen next. And um, um, uh, um, we have uh, the center uh, to receive information uh, related to, uh, to um, uh, the uh, nuclear material um, um, uh, 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 that, uh, that uh, is found or that is um, uh, uh, circulated. And uh, when uh, something is detected, a uh, 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 country uh, in question asks us how to deal with it, uh, we give uh, guidance, uh, we, we give uh, help. For example, in some cases, seal it or uh, evacuate a population um, uh, um, in the 100 meter zone, 200 meter zone, or, uh, we, we give uh, such advice. So training. Uh, keeping information, providing equipment. Um, um, these are uh, very important activities. Um, there are other issues like um, uh, uh, which is important, nuclear security or nuclear safety, nuclear security or disarmament. This, uh, this is an uh, endless debate. And um, uh, we cannot um, use our precious uh, resource, um, human resource and money uh, for that. Um, we like to do concrete things, we like to deliver concrete results. There was a question about CPP and, and um, amendment. Um, we are focused on, on the entry into force of the amendment. Uh, IAEA is uh, the depository, and uh, I worked very hard uh, uh, to enable the entry into force. 
uh, just before uh, the last um, uh, summit meeting. I traveled to um, uh, Central American countries. I talked to the president, I talked to the prime ministers, and uh, I encouraged them uh, to, uh, to bring. Um, uh, Nicaragua uh, was one of the, the last ones um, uh, needed uh, to uh, reach uh, uh, the number needed for the entry into force. And I persuaded and the, the president. And uh, he, uh, he brought it uh, to us. And uh, uh, it, was, um, it entered into force. We are not justified, um, uh, just satisfied with the entry into force. Um, uh, um, uh, ratifying and bringing uh, the instrument of ratification is one thing. Implementing is another thing. So uh, we have organized uh, the uh, contact point, um, uh, national contact point meeting uh, to make them familiar uh, with um, uh, the implementation uh, of uh, CPP and amendment. Um, first, uh, review conference uh, will take place in 2021. And um, uh, normally, uh, we need to start pre preparing um, um, uh, minus two years, prior uh, to two years. And uh, we are starting uh, to identify uh, the countries uh, that are ready uh, to contribute as co-chairs or chairs of uh, the meeting. But um, uh, this is not a secretariat meeting. This is uh, uh, the meeting among uh, the member states of uh, the CPPN amendment. Uh, so we should not intervene too much, but we need to help them. And some um, uh, things are moving forward. Uh, the first thing uh, is to um, address uh, the uh, legal aspects, technical aspects, and, and that will take place uh, soon uh, in April. Uh, you uh, mentioned um, uh, the, uh, the uh, nuclear security. So uh, I would like to uh, say that we have uh, three important events in the coming years. Uh, in early 2020, we will have the ministerial conference on nuclear security. That is our conference. And um, uh, uh, co-chairs have been already identified, uh, uh, Romania and um, uh, Panama. And um, uh, those uh, two countries have a strong credit uh, to lead uh, the process. And um, uh, the first meeting will take place on, on the 15th of April. So its uh, uh, preparation um, is, um, uh, is making good progress. Um, uh, the conference is expected uh, to issue uh, that ministerial declaration. And uh, this is the first important event. Then, based on, this is uh, our meeting, uh, and uh, we take the leadership. Uh, the, uh, based on the result of on the nuclear uh, security conference, we will establish uh, the um, a nuclear security plan uh, in 2021 um, uh, um, uh, to cover uh, the, uh, the following uh, cycle. And um, uh, then we'll have this um, uh, review conference of CPPN uh, amendment. Three um, uh, important uh, events, meetings um, uh, in a short period of time. I would like to, uh, I, will, I see this is a very good opportunity uh, to mainstreaming uh, the uh, nuclear security um, uh, activities. Um, this is a core activity of the IAEA. This is some of the mainstream activities, and this must be recognized as such by member states. But at the end, ministerial uh, declaration is not my declaration. Uh, the member states' uh, agreement is needed. I encourage uh, all the countries uh, to come up uh, with um, uh, this idea of mainstreaming uh, the nuclear security um, uh, activities. We'll take care of all the concrete things um, uh, to, um, for the benefit of member states. Thank you very much. Okay, we could take a few more. Um, uh, Simone, why don't we kind of switch areas? I think right behind you, there's one also as well. Directly, we'll do this one, and then uh, the young lady behind you for the next. Hello. Uh, my name is Tatiana Smilowski. I'm a correspondent with Reynolds Two News Agency. Could you tell us a little bit more about your visit in Washington, who you've met, what have been discussed, what challenges, uh, problems were raised? And also, I'm wondering, after the U.S. withdrawal from the GCPOA, um, can you tell us like, if something has changed on the ground in Iran for inspectors? Uh, are there any problems or, for like, getting access to uh, some sites? Or nothing has changed, just like, a little bit of information on that. Thank you so much. 
No, this is a question. So, will it happen, or what happens if uh, such a thing happens? I think she was asking first about just the rest of your itinerary and meetings and your visit oh, yeah, in Washington. Yes, and, and, JCPOA. and on JCPOA, it was, has anything changed on the ground after the U.S. withdrew? So okay. has anything changed okay. in terms of what okay. your operational experience okay. on the ground? Do you want to go ahead and no, answer no, that? I'll, I'll, or take I'll another? I'll take more, more questions. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Aranjana Das, PhD student in Georgetown. Um, thank you so much for coming here, it's an honor. Um, my question is more philosophical than technical. You mentioned autonomy, independence of the IAEA. Um, qu very quickly, there have been several books written about the IAEA. My favorite is um, the one by Robert Brown. It's called Nuclear Authority, the IAEA and the Absolute Weapon. And he traces the sources of authority for the IAEA and they are the very same ones that you just mentioned. So certainly IAEA has a lot of authority because it provides not only technical assistance, but also nuclear policy cooperation. Now, having laid that out, my question to you is, when there's political rhetoric happening in certain key member states, such as where we are right now, um, and that political rhetoric is completely different from the IAEA's official position, for example, on the JCPOA, then what is the thinking within IAEA in terms of the effect that might have on the autonomy of the organization? And do you sometimes, thinking forward, think about what the nature of that autonomy needs to be like in order to immune the organization against political wins happening in an individual member state? Thank you. Let's see, I've got, um, I'll come up the aisle, Simone, and then we'll take, we'll answer with those. Uh, the woman in the camel colored coat, there we go. Um, thank you so much, Director General, for speaking to us today. Um, I wanna ask you specifically on North Korea. So at the Hanoi summit, Kim Jong-un offered to denuclearize the Yongbyon area to President Trump. Um, from the perspective of IAE, how long do you think it would take to verify the denuclearization of Yongbyon? And also from the perspective of IAEA, which area do you think which area do you think should be inspected first? Right. Which area? Yeah. Which area? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll answer questions. Um, uh, starting from uh, my visit uh, to to Washington, um, I uh, came to Washington on um, uh, in the evening of uh, Tuesday, and I'm leaving uh, tomorrow. During um, um, uh, uh, these days. I had um, uh, the privilege of meeting uh, with uh, the Secretary Pompeo and um, uh, um, I say John Bolton, uh, and I met with uh, the senators, um, uh, congressmen. Uh, I um, had discussion with um, uh, the um, high officials um, from uh, the, uh, the uh, State uh, Department. Uh, I had uh, the opportunity to meet with um, um, uh, Secretary Rick Perry um, from um, uh, DOE. And um, uh, I'm now attending this um, uh, very uh, prestigious uh, meeting. So uh, uh, this is a short stay, uh, but um, uh, very fruitful and uh, productive. Um, uh, it is very um, important for me uh, to understand uh, the policy orientation of um, uh, the, uh, the policy makers, uh, think tanks, um, uh, lawmakers uh, of your country. Uh, if uh, we believe uh, that uh, I know that well, uh, and uh, they, uh, they believe that they know our policy well, um, uh, the, the misunderstanding uh, can develop. So compare notes um, uh, regularly, uh, periodically, uh, is very, very important uh, for me. Um, so, um, uh, during these visits, um, uh, we uh, discuss uh, the matters of common interest, um, um, uh, North Korea, uh, Iran, uh, nuclear security, uh, but um, uh, I could not miss um, uh, the need uh, to increase uh, the budget. Um, a modest budget increase is needed uh, to sustain uh, activities, and that is the benefit uh, for everyone. Um, um, uh, the attitude of Iranians after um, uh, the, um, uh, the withdrawal of the United States from the JCPOA, um, um, they keep on saying um, uh, the environment is becoming difficult. Um, uh, there are those who support the JCPOA, but there are others who do not support uh, the uh, JCPOA. And um, um, uh, those people uh, uh, who are uh, in charge of implementing are under pressure all the time. 
Um, uh, but uh, the fact is that they continue to implement uh, the, uh, the, uh, the agreement. It is not my ro role uh, how um, big the pressure is, how divided they are. This is not my, my function. Uh, I focus on, uh, on materials, equipment, uh, and um, uh, 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 they do activities uh, within uh, the, uh, the framework set by the JCPO. Uh, that is what uh, we can say today. I do not speculate what will happen in the future. And um, uh, I make it very clear that if they implement, I say so. If they don't implement, I also say so. And uh, this is some uh, very important reference point for them. Um, uh, do, uh, have they changed um, uh, their attitudes? Um, uh, it is, inspection is always uh, difficult. And, um, not only in Iran, in other countries too. Uh, but uh, 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 that is our job. And uh, we uh, deal with them. Uh, we keep correct distance and discharge our responsibilities in an uh, impartial, independent, and more um, uh, objective manner. Um, um, that is some of the, uh, my answer for the first question. Uh, second, um, um, on the uh, political remarks, um, uh, autonomy. Um, uh, um, there are uh, various remarks um, from, um, from uh, political leaders, some um, uh, from individuals, uh, from experts, um, and um, uh, there are plenty of views. We do not comment. Uh, we do not analyze uh, the remarks. Um, uh, that is not uh, our job. Uh, we uh, focus on nuclear material. On remarks are not nuclear material, so we don't analyze and we don't comment. Uh, we uh, analyze material, equipment, or on to uh, prevent uh, the uh, spread. Or uh, sometimes remarks change. Or uh, uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, exaggerated. Sometimes it is understated. Um, uh, uh, that is not uh, um, uh, our reference point. Our reference point are the material and equipment. And um, as we focus on uh, these issues, uh, I mean, as we stay as a technical organization, uh, we have the value. And um, I make it very clear under uh, my uh, director generalship, we, I, be, I see um, our organization as a technical organization. That, but I have to add uh, that um, uh, IAEA is working as a technical organization in a very highly uh, political environment. Anything related to our uh, work, i.e. Uh, Iran, North Korea, um, uh, nuclear um, uh, disarmament, um, uh, nuclear power, everything is, um, is uh, highly political. That's why we need to stay technical. Uh, and um, I, I find it very important to respect, abide by the rules. Um, uh, uh, some countries uh, ask us, why don't you do more? Uh, why uh, don't you, uh, can't you do more quickly? Or why uh, don't you address uh, this, uh, this issue and that issue? Uh, we do that in accordance with uh, our rule. And we are happy uh, to, to do things uh, quickly, but um, uh, abiding by the rule. Um, and this is um, uh, how I see um, uh, our activities. Uh, autonomy. Um, uh, uh, I, I should be independent, and, and I cannot take uh, uh, instruction from, uh, from any individual country, including my own country. Uh, but uh, I am uh, uh, under the authority and subject to the control of the Board of Governors. It means collective uh, guidance, uh, and um, our Board of Governors is uh, the master of, of, of us, or member states. Um, um, how long does it take uh, to Verify North Korea? It was, no. well, I think it was specifically on the question of Yongbyon. If, uh, uh, okay. yeah, if, if, if that was on the table, could mm. you look at just that one piece? And then there, what would you prioritize at the Yongbyon facility, correct? Yeah. Um, uh, our, our expertise is on uh, enrichment um, um, uh, 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 and other activities uh, related uh, to nuclear material and a uh, nuclear fuel cycle. So uh, uh, these uh, are the uh, uh, priorities, uh, but um, uh, uh, there is um, uh, no agreement yet. 
um, and um, uh, we don't know uh, whether we will be asked or not, and um, we don't know what will be the uh, content of the agreement. So it is too early to say which is the priority. And um, uh, um, uh, I, I, I just can't um, uh, pronounce uh, which is the priority. If uh, there is a priority, uh, it is, um, uh, as I said, nuclear related commit, uh, commit, uh, commitment must be supported, must be accompanied by robust verification. Um, uh, verification. Absolutely. All right. Um, I'm going to take one last set, probably. I see uh, one here, and we'll take a Laura. And then there'll be one behind that might okay. do us. Laura first. Okay. Uh, Laura Kennedy, um, uh, Arms Control Association. We've had the pleasure, of course, of working um, with the Director General in 2014 15. So, first of all, I did want to say thank you basically for your years of, of work as an international public service and uh, your team at one of the most important agencies, I think, in the world. Okay, I've got a technical question. Um, uh, and that is, you talked about the increasing demands on the safeguards um, uh, department, the, the pressure on the budget. And so we've seen over the years how you've tried, the agency has tried to develop more comprehensive and targeted approaches, you know, the, the state level uh, concept. But it's had its critics. I think of Russia, for example. Um, so I wondered if you could talk about. Um, uh, you know, have you been able to assuage concerns of these critics and how this is operating? Thank you. Okay, and I think, yep, there was one question here. Simone's coming from the other side. Thank you, I'm uh, Carlton Stoiber. Uh, I now chair the uh, Nuclear Security Working Group of the International Nuclear Law Association. Thank you very much, uh, Director General, for this excellent presentation. We've worked together, uh, if, if I remember correctly, uh, on the uh, indefinite extension of the, uh, of the NPT. So it's good to see you again. My question has to do with your issue of budget and resources. And my question is, uh, we have many private organizations, including the organization we're now sitting within, who have interests in these fields. And I'm wondering to what extent these organizations, academic organizations, environmental organizations, uh, professional organizations can contribute to helping the IAEA deal with this resource problem. Thank you. All right, I believe we have uh, covered most. Why don't we take those two? And yes. Just yes. about on right on time. Yes. Um, uh, on our state level approach, um, um, this is not a mystery, and um, uh, there is no no, uh, no much uh, secret, but. Um, uh, Perhaps we have given um, um, quite uh, exotic names, um, uh, SLA, state level approach, the state level concept, um, uh, information driven um, uh, safeguards. Uh, but uh, the essence is that let's look at uh, the country as a whole, not uh, facility by uh, facility. And uh, this is uh, the essence of the idea. And there's nothing wrong. And, um, um, uh, quite often, uh, uh, this, uh, this will contribute to increase um, uh, the uh, increase um, uh, efficiency uh, and to um, standardize on uh, the method. Uh, we can focus on specific issues, and this is very helpful uh, to uh, uh, implement uh, the safeguard agreement. Uh, it is true uh, that um, uh, um, debate uh, continues, and I cannot say uh, that member states are, are fully persuaded. And uh, like in uh, other cases, um, uh, problems uh, do not disappear. Uh, we need to keep on uh, talking to them, keep on explaining. And um, uh, with these efforts, um, um, uh, member states um, have better understanding, and we too have a better understanding why uh, they have um, uh, concerns. And um, uh, a lot of questions uh, can be resolved. Um, some countries say they were not fully cons consulted. Or if they want to be consulted, why not? Um, we are very happy to have a, a bilateral consultation, uh, keep them informed, and uh, listen to them. Um, some issues can be resolved. Other issues, we, we have to say no uh, because of uh, the verification needs and, or misunderstanding uh, can be resolved. Um, I don't mean that all the problems will disappear, but uh, that is some, uh, we are living in the real world and some, uh, um, these continuous efforts are needed. 
um, um, uh, so uh, in the short answer, uh, uh, I cannot say uh, that all the countries are persuaded, uh, but um, we are uh, um, uh, making continuous efforts and um, uh, that will continue to improve the situation. We should not uh, forget that we just started and um, uh, um, uh, most of the material uh, are covered by uh, the, uh, the uh, state level uh, approaches and the, uh, in the can, uh, staying in the countries with um, um, state level approach. But we just started and um, um, uh, verification requires experience. Uh, just sign the document and, um, uh, uh, and um, uh, um, um, start to discuss about it is, is not the um, right approach. We need uh, to uh, reach, uh, we need uh, to establish uh, the state uh, level approach. We need to implement it with uh, the country in question. We accumulate uh, experience and it is not uh, one month or two months. Uh, several uh, years are needed uh, to accumulate uh, the experience and then uh, we can have a meaningful uh, discussion. Uh, so this is how we see uh, the, 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 I, uh, uh, from time to time to say, uh, if you buy 50 books, next thing is not to buy more books, read it, read them, and to digest the content, and then move on to the next step. So patience and uh, pragmatic, realistic approach is needed for this. Budget and uh, cooperation with other organizations, we benefit a lot. Uh, from um, uh, the U.S. laboratories, some um, uh, private organizations, uh, think tanks uh, like U.S. Uh, to understand um, um, concerns, um, uh, get input on from private companies too. Uh, they have the uh, technology on the IT uh, development of from camera and all of these things. Um, uh, we cannot fabricate any one camera. Uh, but um, uh, the companies, uh, private companies are doing it. Um, uh, uh, you uh, can offer them uh, the occasion like this uh, for a uh, free exchange of uh, views. In the Board of Governors, everyone is bound by the instruction. And um, um, uh, the type of discussion is of a different nature. Uh, we, we benefit a lot uh, from, uh, from uh, 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 member states, uh, from civil society, uh, from uh, laboratories, and uh, uh, we, uh, we will continue uh, to work with them. Uh, so I just would like to thank um, uh, their contribution to our work. Well, thank you very much. I think that's almost the perfect note. Uh, so I would like to say on behalf of the Project on Nuclear Issues and the Center for Strategic and International Studies, we are grateful that you took time out of your day to come spend time with us and the audience, uh, as well as everyone who is online watching and who will watch uh, further. I think you really provided a lot of detail and insight uh, into the issues of the day, and I think will be a great resource to people who are focused on this. So thank you very much. Thank and much. if I could ask the audience to join me in thanking you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.